figure out the general set of rules up front. You know what I mean? If you want to, if you if you want to do backflips in your sandbox, we'll go rake it and check for glass and stuff first, and then blow in the wind. You know, you want to. Um, we look at it in sports, man. I mean, you know, you get a new defensive coordinator coming to a situation, and he's got he's got all these complicated schemes. He's got great athletes, but if he's only there in year one, you see those players hesitating on the field because they're thinking. You don't want to be thinking when it's game time. Now, so have the time to handle, to un- take the time to really understand the rules and sort of what the general boundaries are. You spend enough time doing that, then you're then you're free to play. Yeah. Then you can do your backflip, buck naked in your sandbox. Then you can call an audible. Then you can have your instincts. You don't want to be thinking when you're when you're in the game, whatever that game is. It, it's absolutely true. Do you see it all the time in sports where the best players they're not thinking, they're just reacting and they're just doing it second nature. Um. How many times I didn't see this in the memoir? How many times uh, you you somehow omitted this? But how many times during your diary going back were you like, I think this is the year Texas is back. Like I'm really feeling it this year. <laughs> <laughs> you left that out. I didn't see that nice, part. <laughs> nice, nice lead. Nice lead into these current times too. Uh, ah, yes. Um, well, they were back uh, uh, mm-hmm. quite a few times. They yep. were there. They were present along, along my writing. I was, I've was i always been a Longhorn fan, even since I was 14, I started writing. Um, and, uh, you know, I was keeping diaries when we won national championship. Uh, I was keeping diaries all the way through when we got to the national championship against, uh, against Bama as well. And I still keep them. So uh, um, we got work to do as a team yeah. uh, to, to get back to where we need to be. Yeah. Do you ever um... – when you give a pump up speech, when they ask you to give a pump up speech, you know, the, the, the let, let it fucking rip man, which was maybe the coolest speech mm-hmm. ever. And you guys beat Notre Dame. Do you feel extra pressure? Because if you give a great speech and you give like the Matthew McConaughey, let it fucking rip man. And then they suck. You're like, well, <laughs> what the hell happened here, guys? Yeah. Well, look, me giving them a, a, a speech is not a magic bullet. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not, I'm not a magician. I don't it's, know. That let it fucking they, rip they, speech. That was they, a magic bullet. Let it fucking rip, man. Let it fucking rip. And then we scored some points and got off. Yeah, we looked like we were off the chive and we were about to roll through the season, didn't we? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, here's the deal. Here's the thing about talking to the teams, man, is you got to, um, for me, there's two things. I want to know, I like to talk to the coach first because I don't want to go in there and talk about conservatory, liberal, late, and getting players confused. You don't. I don't want to go in there with, completely different message than the our coaches have been throwing at the baseline right. as a baseline message to the team. I don't want to thinking like, well, fuck, wait, is this a new plan? Is this a new way to go about things? So I want to get generally what uh, be sort of synonymous with what the coaches are going for. I also could try to get a read of the team. Look, man, the, 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 the speech I'll give to the team after a 45 to six loss <laughs> is different than what I'll say to the team going into the Big 12 championship. You know, you get to a Big 12 championship, your team's confident. They don't need the rah-rah, let's get up. They're right. going to be amped. You know what I mean? Let's just let this one be about, hey, take, maybe take, everyone make sure and take 15 minutes tonight to think about how you got here, to think about your brothers, sisters, mom and dad, grandmothers who watched you play, why you love the game of football. Think about it for a minute and think about this up, you know, so maybe it's a calming thing that is still challenging them. Well, but after a 45 to three loss, I remember this, I went, went talk to a, a, a team early in Mac Brown's career and we had just got our waxed by UCLA. And I remember being at practice and the team's confidence was so low, man. And in practice, the team was applauding clean handoffs. Mm-hmm. And I was like, applauding a clean handoff and and i remember max saying man the team's morale and confidence is so low right now you know we we, we i mean a a a a a completion for two yards we we're going good job and he built them out of that now that's very different than talking to the national championship team about to go play usc that team's rolling man highly confident so what is your game plan know that you know finish finish every single play to you know until that things like that so the speeches are different for each time 
Yeah. How, how do you where the team is? How do you time that out? Uh, because if you're not familiar with the city of Austin, their practice field is right underneath the I-35 overpass. So it's not exactly the quietest part of town. It's pretty noisy. Do you have to wait and we say to yourself, like, we have to do this after rush hour? Or are you just out there, like, screaming over cars? Ah, uh, it, it's whatever hour, man. When we're in that, it doesn't matter if it's if there's 10,000, 18 wheelers coming down I-35. It, it, all the focus is right there on the field, and, I, and, I, and I'll speak over it. Final question brought to you by Cross Country Mortgage, America's crazy good mortgage company. Go to ccmlens.com slash take to learn more about your future home, buying experience, or refi- uh, refinancing needs, equal housing opportunity. Um, I have one fact check to pull on your book. I don't know how much fact checking went into it, but you said um, towards the start of the book, I have a lot of proof that the universe is conspiring to make me happy. How can you possibly yeah. sit there and write that as a fan of the Washington football team? Hmm. That's a good point. <laughs> Doesn't add up. All right. Hey, we got time. It's a hundred year war. Thousand year war. We got time. Thousand year Washington war. Football team. Ah, you know, I've been a fan of the now called Washington football team up until recently. Uh, what was called the Washington Redskin team. You know, I grew up outside of Dallas. Um, I was the only at that time Redskin fan. In Texas, man. I mean, I would go to, I went to Texas Stadium in a chamois. You know, the chamois you drive your car with? Mm-hmm. You know, those, I went to, in a, with a chamois wrapped around my waist with nothing but my underwear on under it and a rope wrapped around my waist, painted burgundy, head to toe with a headdress on, and was on the 50 yard line in Texas Stadium when the Redskins played the Cowboys. Was that four years ago? I would sneak out of church. (laughs) Yeah, actually, I was about, I was in 19, I think, 78, 79. Um, I was at the last game at RFK. I have a mason jar with burgundy soil, grass from the soil from the end zone, last game of RFK. First game at Jack Kent Cook. First game at FedEx Field. Um, I've, you know, where I grew up wanting to be John Riggins, man, Mm -hmm. you know, 3.4 yards to carry the diesel name desire, Mr. October, man, in the backyard, you couldn't get me down because I was John Riggo Riggins, man. I grew up with the fun bunch. I'm hanging out with, I chased down as a kid, Daryl Green, uh, um, you know, uh, look at what the Redskins have done. Look at what they did with quarterbacks look what joe gibbs did with quarterbacks right. from jay schrader to ripping to doug williams not j- journeymen that came in and were the right man for the job at that time yeah and along with the 49ers i mean what was it the 90s or the 80s that we basically sort of owned with the 49ers yeah um hey we're here we go rebuilding again let's see man uh we got to you know get the culture right over there uh now with the now called washington football team what's the name going to be what's the consensus out there i'm pushing for red wolves Wolves. i'm I'm pushing for the washington red wolves i I just think it'd be cool that you got the teeth you got all the fans in the stands just making big howling noises if they play a game when there's a full moon that'd be incredible you can't bet against them then here we go uh i I like that i just think that they're there are no professional football teams named after dogs, and everybody loves dogs, right? Yeah, but you got to watch. I mean, Red Bull is pretty aggressive. I mean, you can't have the poodles, you know what I mean? So, I mean, you still got to be have some, you still got to go out there and have a pretty intimidating name. Yeah, yeah. They, they yeah call Red Bulls work. Call them the yeah. Wolf Pack. Yeah, yeah I, we were actually talking to the president of the Washington football team because I, I was born and raised in Northern Virginia. So I grew up, you know, watching those teams. And you're right, Joe Gibbs does not get enough credit because I think he's the only head coach. Probably ever, probably from now even until the history of the NFL is is written, that took three separate quarterbacks to three separate Super Bowl titles. That's pretty much impossible yeah. to do, especially now. And those quarterbacks didn't go on to be, you know, big. They weren't like first ballot Hall of Famers. They weren't like guys like they weren't Brady's and Peyton Manning's. You know, they were guys at the right time, second stringers that, that took a, took a, took the opportunity and ran with it. You know, right. yeah.